Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today we're checking out an application called Auto FPS. Now in a nutshell, what this application does is dynamically adjusts your terrain level of detail in order to have your simulator achieve a given FPS value which you can set. So let's say you set it to, I don't know, 35 FPS. If the sim can't keep up and you start dropping below that, it will start to bring down your terrain level of detail until either your desired frame rate is achieved or it reaches the lowest terrain level of detail setting. Why is that important? Well, if your simming experience is anything like mine, you will have found that things are going great until you get near a big airport, especially those big custom airports that like to rip your FPS in half. By using auto FPS, the idea is that when you're on the ground at an airport, you can preserve your FPS by running at a much lower terrain level of detail as frankly, when you're taxiing around on the ground, there isn't much to see beyond the terminal buildings and the taxiways around you. Yet with a higher terrain level of detail, the sim will be rendering a ton of stuff in the surrounding area that you just can't see. It's not until you get up into the air and the amount that we can see rapidly increases that then a higher terrain level of detail becomes more important. So you set the FPS target, you set the lowest terrain level of detail, you set the highest terrain level of detail that you would like, and it does the rest. There are some similar applications, uh, Dynamic LOD Reset Edition being one of them that's been doing the rounds quite recently. What Auto FPS does is simplify it, so there's less config work for you. So I figured that's why we'd take a look at this one today and see what it's all about. If you're wondering whether you should choose Auto FPS or maybe Dynamic LOD Reset Edition, uh, the developer's got a nice little explainer on their GitHub page if you wanted to take a look at that. You may also find, um, that you get some antivirus warnings when you go to install this. Um, the developer says here um, that this utility is unsigned because I'm a hobbyist and the cost of obtaining a certification is prohibitive to me. So download at your own risk. I'll leave a link in the description if you want in to try it out. And with that, let's jump into the sim and let's do a test flight. Okay, folks, here we are in the sim. We are at Bristol Airport at the Pilot Plus version of Bristol, so quite a heavy hitting piece of scenery. We're also in the Phoenix A320, which again is quite a heavy hitting aircraft. So uh, giving the sim a good workout here. So we've got auto FPS loaded up and you can see here there's a tick box to use expert options. By default, this is off, but I've ticked it to come open. And all that does, it shows you what you can do really. You can set a minimum terrain level of detail that you're willing to accept. Um, that's at 50 by default and you've got the maximum at 200. And also you've got the cloud recovery terrain level of detail at 100. So basically the idea is, is that if you, if it keeps dropping the terrain level of detail to try and hit your desired FPS numbers, if it can't do that, it will then start attacking the clouds. So you kind of got terrain level of detail first, then clouds. The other thing to look at is you've got this tick box down here pause when msfs loses focus so at the moment this is the window that's in focus so actually it's not affecting the terrain level of detail at the moment this is i think due to uh, to do with frame generation because um this app can detect frames generated by frame generation but frame generation only works when the sim is in focus like it is now i've turned frame gen off for this testing um just because i wanted to see what it was like without it so really the only option if you want to use this with frame gen is to maybe like drag this off to another monitor and just observe it while keeping the sim in focus. So we're going to untick this box for now and that will allow it all to work while we've got this window in focus so we can view it for the purpose of this video. So um, we'll go with that. So I've set quite a high target really of 60 FPS. I don't know whether that's going to be too high, but we'll start with 60 and then if we need to drop it to actually get the train level of detail to come up from 50, then we will as we go. So what we're going to do, I'm going to use FSI panel to set us up on an eight mile final for landing. And we'll just observe, we'll set the plane into autopilot to do an auto land. And yeah, we'll just, we'll just see what happens. See, uh, see how things see how things go all right folks so here we are on our final approach into bristol the plane is configured for an auto land so we can just focus on the numbers so you see i've set a target fps of 60 and you can see that it's just basically not able to meet that so the train level of detail is falling down to 50 um although it's still struggling isn't it to maintain a 60 so i think that's probably a little bit a little bit ambitious so let's drop it down to 45 let's see what happens so the train level of detail is going to start going up now because of course it can achieve above 45 quite comfortably 110 15 20 how high is it going to go how high are you going to go 
150, 155, 160. Now look here, it also says priority FPS. Now in a moment, that probably will change um, as we enter, yeah, there we go, priority terrain level of detail minimum. So it knows really that we're now in kind of a critical phase of flight. We're coming into land, we're quite low. So it's gonna drop the terrain level of detail down to the minimum that we've set, which is 50. So keep your eye on this number here. That's gonna keep dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping all the way down to 50. The idea is behind that, is that because we're in a critical phase of flight the most important thing to us right now is FPS so even if it doesn't need to drop all the way down to 50 on the train level of detail to achieve our 45 FPS it's going to do it anyway just so that we basically reduce the chances of any sort of FPS dips that might occur it's basically giving you the best overall chance of uh, high FPS on landing now what we'll do is we'll let this terrain level of detail get down to 50 just to kind of prove the point which will be any minute now there it is what you can do if you think well actually no I've I've spent a lot on my PC I don't need it to do that I'm confident in my machine that it can achieve 45 FPS even when we're this close to the airport all I want it to do is dynamically adjust the terrain level of detail to ensure it stays at 45 what you can do there's a tick box here terrain level of detail minimum on ground slash landing untick that priority should change now to FPS so it's going to go back to dynamically fluctuating the terrain level of detail in order to try and achieve 45 frames a second now of course you do run the risk that it might drop below 45 and that it won't raise the terrain level of detail or sorry lower the terrain level of detail quick enough to compensate which is kind of the whole reason for this tick box feature here so quite a cool piece of software really quite a cool piece of software indeed it's definitely uh, very much like set it and forget it now obviously the other piece of software we spoke about um, does give you a lot more control so if you're thinking actually auto FPS it's lacking a bit of control that I would quite like well then you've got other options too Right, here we go. Let's keep an eye on the FPS. Yeah, so the FPS is now 40. And you can see the train level of detail is dropping, but it's not dropping quick enough in order to compensate for the low FPS. So that kind of is why. There you go. That's why we have this tick box here. Let's turn that back on. And you can see we've gone to a train level of detail of 50 almost immediately, and our FPS is now fine. So really, you're going to have to make your own mind up on that one. What's, uh, what's the highest priority to you? I might leave it off because I've got frame generation on usually. So we're always going to be above 45 um, with frame gen. It's just really, I kind of want this as a bit of a bit of a backup. Just in case we're at a big old airport like LAX or maybe the flightsim.to version of Gatwick. Um which can get a bit iffy sometimes so having the ability to dynamically have your terrain level of detail drop down to ensure smoothness I'm all for that but this is a very cool piece of software very impressed indeed again I'll leave links in the description keep in mind that it's not a signed piece of software so it's going to trigger all your antivirus so um, download at your own risk I mean the developer says it's because um, they can't get a uh, certificate to make it a signed piece of software because it's cost prohibitive um, I'm willing to be trusting but of course <laughs> you know you never know with these things so download at your own risk but I've got to say very very impressed indeed I'm gonna leave it there let me know in the comments if you've got any questions um, I'll be happy to have a chat with you about it and also be curious to see if it's helped you in any way with your sim settings I know <laughs> sim performance is always one of those evergreen topics isn't it it's never we're never quite happy are we we always, we always want a little bit more FPS we'll always take whatever we can get and uh, this is a very, very cool way of getting a little bit more without giving up a whole lot. So, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed for watching. As always, take the very best care of yourselves and happy flying.